Hello, my sweet little graphite leaps. I know I've disappeared for a bit, uh, sorry about that, but I had to take a break mainly because uh, I needed to understand which way I want my channel to go. And after months of thinking, setting aside animation because it would take way too much time, and simple speed drawing because I understand they can be boring. Uh, I came to the conclusion that storytelling voiceovers was the right path. Uh, mostly because uh, I like doing that, my English will get hopefully better and it will help me reach out to you even more. So yeah, I guess we're doing that and uh, if you would like to sustain me and support me, you maybe would be so kind to put a like. Maybe, 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 never mind. So, uh, we've all got uh, different patients, right? Some people are fascinated by space, some others like practicing sports, and many other couch potatoes like me enjoy comics, books, and video games. My number one passion, which also happens to be my job, is drawing. But I've also got some other interests. Uh, that I had never had the pleasure to talk about with you. One of them being minerals. I have a huge mineral collection. Um, I've been always fascinated by stones and their varieties. Like, um, oh my god, do you even realize how many of them are out there? I mean, it's insane. <laughs> Plus, they are beautiful, and I love learning about their properties and origins. But um, I'm getting off topic here. Um, there's actually another patient of mine that I thought once forgotten. But it was always there, lurking underground like a zombie. Just waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And a few months ago, it got me. I'm of course talking about horses. <laughs> okay, uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, hi! Uh, you can call me Pencil Trio or just Pencil. I'm from the country of pizza and the pasta. <laughs> Freelancer, comic artist, animator, in love with Disney art style, a Steven Universe fan, Ambiverse, Ravenclaw, actually 28 years old, uh, yada yada, and I love horses. It started back when I was very young, like three years or so. Mm. Don't ask me why. Uh, everything that I that everything that had a, the shape of a horse, uh, I want. Um, Toy figures made with her destroying plastic, floating balloons, plushies, picture books, even knickknacks wouldn't escape my tiny baby hands. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, my favorite cartoon series back in the good old 90s had mostly horses or equines as protagonists. I, I was not intimidated by their size. Um, they were loyal and brave companions ready to go on adventures with me. The don't even get me started with the movie Spirit. Um, just, just to let you know, as soon as I saw that movie and I came back home, I pretended to be a wild Mustang for the rest of the month while playing solo. And don't judge me, I know you've done that too, I know that. <laughs> I mean, that movie was freaking amazing or what? Uh, yes, it was freaking amazing. So recently I was advised by my doctor to choose a sport I really wanted to do because uh, I need to move due to health problems, but that's maybe for another video. Um, I thought and thought and came up with two possibilities, uh, swimming and horseback riding. So I said to myself, okay, might as well choose one. Swimming sounds good. Um, uh, but I'm too lazy in shaving my legs every day. Plus the water might be cold, which may not charge my motivation. Horseback riding, on the other hand, I love horses, 
contact with animals might help my mental health too. I love riders' outfits and I'll be staying in the countryside, enjoying the fresh air. So, horseback riding won the pros and cons checklist. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, I hesitated for a bit. <laughs> you see, uh, even though horses are handsome and majestic creatures to me, uh, they still are prey animals. And prey animals get spooked very easily, so they are a bit unpredictable like that. And this factor is clearly dangerous, <laughs> especially if I am sitting on their back, you know? Well, <laughs> I mean. I might get injured, like really bad, I could get kicked, beaten or unsettled. And therefore I could break my nose, legs, arms, ribcage, jaws, back, and, <laughs> and you get the point. But I charged myself with courage and searched for a local riding school. The instructor of the school I've found is a friendly middle-aged man, um, let's call him uh, Mike. He showed me around the stables and let me pet all the horses. At some point he asked, so have you ever been on a horse before? <laughs> boy oh boy, let me tell you the reason why this patient of mine for horses got buried under the many layers of my mind for such a long time. When I was 12, I asked my mom if I could learn how to ride and she said yes, of course. She took me to a man who owned a mare, let's call him a... Hugo. So Hugo asked me the same question. Have you ever been on a horse before? And I, as a sassy little 12 years old girl, thought about when I was around 6 or 7 and my grandpa took me for a ride to the local stable just for fun. I remember the ride being quite comfortable so I answered oh yeah I totally know how to control this massive beast I can ride her no problem I'm like the horse avatar and you know, despite my mom being there, correcting me, telling Hugo the truth, which was I didn't know absolutely anything about how to actually ride, he chose to believe me. Me, a 12 years old girl. Uh, well, uh, it turned out that this man was not an instructor at all. He worked with... Uh, he used to work with the police and happened to have a horse he allowed me to ride because they were friends with my grandpa or, or something. So I hopped on the mare and the first lesson went quite good. The animal was calm and on a leash, so everything went fine. But at some point uh, of the lesson, um, he told the horse to trot. I said, uh, Wait, uh, I've never trotted before, are you sure I'll be fine? Oh yeah, you'll be fine, he answered. Um, so the mare went to a trot and I was just helplessly bouncing on her back, probably causing uh, the poor animal some serious discomfort. Uh, um, I asked Hugo, is this normal that I am bouncing so much? And he answered, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a way not to bounce. So I said, oh, okay, good, uh, which one is it? And he said, uh, you need to stand up and go down with the horse. Which, what the hell do, does this even mean? <laughs> I tried, but I wasn't doing it. I wasn't, of course I wasn't doing it right. Duh. And so he just start, stopped me and uh, we went back to a pace. Uh, he didn't even try to explain how Trot worked, so I thought uh, he figured I was not ready and wouldn't let me go on a Trot anytime soon, right? Right? <laughs> After the first lesson, uh, I went back home full of happiness and with a bit of sore legs. But then the second lesson came. 
I hopped on the mare and started to make her go around the paddock at a pace. At some point Hugo gave me free bridles, which means I was the only one in control of the horse, uh, there wasn't any security leash, I was all on my own. And that made me, and uh, of course that made me a little nervous. I said, uh, um, uh, are you sure? I said, uh, yeah, let's go on a trot. And that was, I was like, what, on a trot, like alone by myself? And then, yeah, yeah, on a trot, go on a trot. And he pushed the mare on a trot. And uh, as the horse started trotting, I was too bouncy to focus on directioning her and at the same time keep my balance. So uh, the mare might have felt a bit unsure and started to canter, causing me to sleep off like the sack of potatoes I am. Let's face it, I'm a bit of a sack of potatoes. Um, but anyway, I wasn't, uh, it wasn't a serious fall. The mare didn't even once over me, luckily. Uh, but uh, my back hit the ground so hard that I had troubles breathing for a few minutes. Uh, my mom's reaction wasn't calming at all, but uh, I mean, I don't blame her for that. So after I felt better, Hugo wanted me to hop on the horse again, which, no, I was terrified. <laughs> anyway, um, after a bit of encouragement, I got back on the horse, because I am brave like that. Except I wasn't, because at the, at the slightest shiver the horse had, I freaked out, totally freaked out. <laughs> I, I screamed and I was like, no, I want to get down. Oh my gosh, no, no. So Hugo made me get off and I never wanted to get on a horse again. Um, so going back to the present, as Mike uh, heard the story, he shook his head and told me, never let me go on a trot before months and months of practice at basic pace. Uh, he reassured me, telling uh, I'd also have to do exercises to reinforce my legs, and he'd be teaching me proper ways to fall too. Um, so I guess I'm giving horseback riding another shot. This time though, um, at a proper riding school, starting as it would have been from the beginning, as a humble newbie to the sport. I recently discovered Hugo passed away a few years ago. He fell off the roof of his house. Poor guy. I hope you can watch me being clumsy and silly on the new horses from up there. Anyway, hopefully knowing splices of my life had amused you because <laughs> I do have lots of funny moments to share. Thank you for watching the video and if you enjoyed it give it a like, please, please, please. subscribe please, please, please. and follow me on my socials. Remember life is too short not to try new things so do what you like in the limits of law of course. <laughs> That's it for today's video see you next time my little graphite leaps. Bye!